this will freak you out, but the NFL has scheduled the Titans versus the Titans Sunday. It's not an intra-squad game for Tennessee. That's not even legal, probably. The Titans used to be called the Oilers. The Jets used to be called the Titans. By any name, this game is dreadful. Both teams are 2-11. and 11. But games are not played on paper. They're played inside television sets. Though this game's television reach is not as broad as the two-minute drill from Chris Berman. In this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. This truism was authored by none other than Ben Franklin in 1789. If Franklin were alive today, he undoubtedly would have been a pro football fan, probably an Eagles fan. But he surely would have been wise enough to alter his famous observation of life. In 2014, he would have written, Nothing can be said to be certain except death, taxes, and in the NFL, the Belichick's Patriots teams will win double-digit games and the divisional crown. New England is now 10-3, and three, marking the 12th straight year the Patriots have won in double digits. If you don't do this by waving a magic wand, of course it's helpful that he's had Tom Brady at quarterback for all those seasons except one, but it goes way beyond that. No matter what the makeup of the team, high scoring, lower scoring, you name it, the Patriots win because they rarely beat themselves, and that goes in the essence of the Belichick's coaching. Always among the leaders in turnovers and best of several records, always speaking at the right time, always finding something different in game plan approach on both sides of the ball. Is that what he Look no farther than the winner of Indianapolis. When I know Joe Spray ran for over 200 yards and four touchdowns, he made the cover of Sports Illustrated. We've hardly seen him since. Sunday night's win in San Diego was vintage Belichick because it was defensively driven with his roots. You only allow the high powered lightning bolts only one offensive touchdown. And the biggest play on offense, Brady's broke in the slot to Julian Edelman, which the diminutive dynamo took in the house. The slot receiver has been in New England State, Troy Brown, Wes Welker, and now Edelman. This Sunday, the Patriots host Miami. With a win, they'll win the AFC East again for the 12th time in 14 years. And with a victory, Bill Belichick will move up to fourth on the all time coaches win list, tying Curly Lambeau. Yup, that one. Lambo Field. Belichick has 228 wins and counting. The pass shoved all early last season. Lambo's 229 number has shined like a beacon since the Korean War 50 years ago. The only man in Buffalo, you know these names very well. Third, Tom Landry, 270. Second, the Papa Bear, George Hallis, 324. The old time leader, John Shula, an amazing 347. But who was Earl Curly Lambo? Other than the man after whom the Packers home team is named. Well, let's start with. When they opened the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1963, he was a member of the inaugural class. It's easy to understand why. Like George Hallis was the founding father in Chicago, young Lambeau was the same for the Packers. A local boy who played some football in Notre Dame under Newt Rockney, he convinced the Indian Packing Company, a neat packing outfit in Green Bay, to donate money to purchase uniforms for the team in 1919. Hence, there were the Packers. Lambeau was the first captain, and in 1921, when the joined the league not yet called the NFL, he was coached too. Lambeau's Packers won six NFL titles, three in a row from 1929 to 1931, when the best record was declared champ. 1929, Green Bay, 12-0-1, Lambeau's final year as a player. Championship games were instituted in the 30s. Lambeau's Packers won three of them. 1936 over the Boston Redskins, 1939 over the New York Giants, again in 1944 over the Giants. Lambeau coached the Packers in 1949, making it three decades, before he coached two years each with the Chicago Cardinals and Washington Redskins. He helped bring Newt Rockney's secret weapon, the forward pass, into pro football. In Green Bay's first league game in 1921, Lambeau threw both of the Packers' two passes in a win. He remained ahead of the curve in the passing game by signing the most famous of the seven Hall of Famers who played under him, and Don Hudson. Hudson in the Packers' offense was so good that he caught 99 touchdown passes in a career that spanned only 11 seasons, with usually 11 games played per season. Hudson retired in 1945. His touchdown reception record stood for almost half a century. Lambeau was quite a coach, and he was, for the times of the Midwest locale, quite flamboyant. He wasn't quite revered in the way that Vince Lombardi would be in Green Bay in the 60s. Like Lombardi, he wasn't around later in life to recap all the rewards of his work. He died of a heart attack in 1965 at age 67, two years before the Ice Bowl at Lambeau Field. His legend remains, though, brought to life again by another coaching great, Bill Belichick. And like Belichick and Lambeau, the Swami has excelled down the stretch. 20 and 10 since my beloved San Francisco Giants won the World Series. Four and one last week, now 11 games over 500 of the year. Week 15, now upon us. There's only one thing to do. Read him and weep.
Nikki, have you learned?